coach and I go back, God, was it six, seven, eight years? I don't even know at this point. What? Yeah, 16, 17, I think, is when we first yeah, started coaching so, together so, for a little while. So about, so about eight, eight, nine years we've known each other, um, coaching yep. together at Marion Elgin. Uh, coach is now the, the head football coach at Marion Elgin High School, uh, just about – uh, 45 minutes an hour north of Columbus um, coach um, it's kind of like I I mean when we both started coaching there I mean he had coached at North Union and had some wing T experience before but we both coached under a coach that uh, taught us the kind of the double wing um, coaches since then obviously done a, a very good job there at Marion Elgin um, coach Zach Winslow um, and the, the floor is yours my friend Thanks. I, listen, Nick, I really appreciate you having me. I know we've tried to do stuff before and it just never worked out, but um, I'm really excited to do this and try to answer some of this stuff. You know, the double wing is kind of a um, a closed knit community to a certain extent, but um, I think there's lots of interest in it and wanting to know about it, you know, whether it's gun double wing or, or under center double wing. And, um, you know, you mentioned coach Catris who kind of introduced both of us to the double wing and, and, the double wing is, although schematically you'll see wing T teams do it and other teams do it, but it's more a, a mindset than than just a formation or, or a set of rules. And that's all based around the power play. Um, you know, when we were introduced to it, it was, you know, a full toss, quarterback turn, lead up through. So you're just trying to shove as much humanity through a gap as you can to create, you know, essentially chaos and then your running back finds a natural scene which is usually the cutback and then and cuts back and 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 it's really hard to stop um and even if you do stop it it's usually for a two three four yard gain and if you do that enough times it'll pop um but anyways when you're doing that when you're playing that kind of ball what do defenses do they load the box obviously they load the box and if you're really effective running it then they'll start cutting your offensive lineman, which, you know, as an offensive coordinator, um, I always thought was really cheap, you know, kind of a, a cheap way out for a defensive coordinator just to say, hey, cut my cut the offensive lineman so they can't do their job. Uh, as a former offensive lineman, I, I did not like that. Um, but having to have coached the defensive side against some double wing teams, sometimes you feel like that's all you can do to hopefully stop it. But when defenses are loading the box and stuff like that, you got to have an answer. You got to be able to do something off t- more than just off tackle run. You got to get outside. And that's when we ran rocket. Um, we talked about Scott Spiller before we came on and he is at Lucas high school. He doesn't run the rocket. He runs what he calls the monster sweep, which is a variation of power, but it's outside. It's meant to get outside of your end man on the line of scrappage. Um, so this is our answer. Um, I'll kind of go over how it has morphed, how it was introduced to me and coach Banstra um, under Derek Catris, and then kind of how we've kind of morphed it over the years to allow us to be um, even more multiple out of it um, based on our players' abilities. So why the rocket? Of course, it's the answer to load the box. Like I said, it allows us to stretch the defense horizontally. And when you're in a reduced split offense like the double wing is, or if you're a wing T team where you're, um, you know, not the conventional two, two, three splits, um, you know, you're a little bit more condensed than that, or you're even in double tight, you know, you can still do um, this rocket toss um, the way we run it or, you know, anything to get to the edge that you need to. But you got to have answers when the defense is selling out to stop, you know, your wing based run game. So that's what this is all about. Um, blocking scheme in the original part of this, which I'll show here in a second, was on the play side, we would run our scoop reach uh, steps, you know, we're going to reach through the guy next to us or to the play side of us, try to get him turned inside. Um, backside, though, we were running our boot scheme away from it to try and – the original thought was to try and keep those inside linebackers, if they're keying on their guards, to keep, you know, that backside pursuit player from trying to run down a potential cutback. Um, and then play side wing, yeah, that's what PSW stands for. He's got to reach the most outside defender – and then the fullback, he just blocks back. He's setting the edge to the backside, letting, making sure no leakers come through. Um, and our wide receiver, if they're to the toss, if we're tossing towards the wide receiver, if we have one out there, um, he's going to stalk the near uh, defender. Or um, if it's away, he's going to try and reach that near safety to be a touchdown guy. So that's the, the zone or man concepts that we see down there. And this is kind of what it looks like. So if you look on the right side, this would be 
uh, razor motion, which is our, our rocket motion, the way we term it, term it. And then um, you can see everybody on the front side there is reaching with boot scheme on the back side. Again, just against the five man front, same kind of deal. We're going, we're reaching nose to our play side on the right side, and then we're going to boot back away. These are both out of uh, double tight end sets. Um, this is the same thing just against the six two. So, like I said, we see all kinds of crazy fronts, you know, seven man fronts, uh, four down linemen, two stand ups. Anything you can imagine front-wise, we've seen it. Stunning, blitzing through get different gaps just to try and um, get in our pullers' way and all that stuff. So when we see that stuff, this is uh, our, our first answer. Again, here's the seven-man front kind of showing you what, what it looks like. Okay, well, then we decided um, that that backside boot action from our backside guard – our backside tackle, our backside tight end, um, it got to the point where teams weren't respecting it. So what you say then? Well, okay, throw the boot, which we do, obviously. We, we will throw the boot off of it. Um, but with that razor motion, defenses were starting to key on it. We're rolling their safeties and stuff down um, or blitzing to it in ways that were making it hard to get the edge. So our first answer is – this blocking scheme. So now we reach or scoop everybody across the entire line. Okay, so this is full reach to the place side. Um, and I'll show you some film of this and show you the difference of the two. Um, now we do have some answers to it with fullback, some fullback and wingback game back underneath, underneath that rocket motion. But our first step is getting this full reach, which we're telling our backside guys, you are the touchdown blocks. So if somebody sets the edge hard and we have to cut it back across the field, these are the guys that are going to be there or should be there to get those second and third level defenders that we can cut back right underneath. Okay. And this is just another illustration of that. Now we're showing you the reach. Everybody's full reach gap over, um, you know, so the the terminology we try to use is we're going to reach the next man to our play side. So everybody's trying to go over. Um, we do make a call here where I sh the play side tight end here, basically where it's pin and pull. The tight end will pin the guy down, and then the, the tackle or the guard, depending on the formation, will run around him. Um, this has been really helpful with sometimes how they line up. We just have a call up front where we can do that. Or, again, it'll be a full reach. Uh, let's go see some film here. Okay, so this this is back in, I think, 2017. Um, so it's going to be rocket at us. So this would be nine rocket in our verb. Um, so you can see here that we're going to reach this stand-up wing here is going to be responsible for this corner setting the edge. Okay, so we'll play it through here full speed just so you can see the play. Now, if we run it back and break it down to the offensive line. Okay, so this tight end is responsible for this stand-up. Now, if this stand-up guy or these down guys play stiff and we can get them pinned back inside, we tell our, our linemen, run around. You know, just work your way around because, you know, in – in reality, I'm not telling this tackle here that he's got to block this, um, you know, inside technique. He shouldn't be wasted. The guard should be reaching around here. So really, this man by rule, our left tackle, is responsible for this linebacker that's play side. So whether he scoops that up through the gap and gets to him, or if him and the tight end can work together to get all the way around, that's even better for us, in my opinion. Okay, if they try to run underneath of us, that's good. This guy's already done and gone and passed. So if we watch it in slow motion here, reach around. And if you look, the defensive tackles are cutting or trying to cut our offensive linemen. But luckily, our offensive linemen lose some ground. And this guy laying here on the ground didn't touch his soul. He completely wasted himself. And now we've got numbers out here. Two linemen on a linebacker and a safety, and it's a pretty good gain for us. Now, I would have liked this tackle to be able to 
have a little bit better p- body position, maybe set this guy up for a touchdown run, but still a good play overall. Now, this is early on, like I said, so we're running boot scheme here on the backside. So if you watch this backside guard, it's not a great um, example, but you'll see him. He kind of steps up and moves his body to the edge here. He doesn't full sell it like we're running boot um, as well as I would like him to, but this is the way we used to do it. So motion, guard, shuffles, and he would be – this guard here that's got a defender on his legs would be responsible for this end man if we were on boot. Tight ends releasing for what could be a, a pass route if we were running boot. Quarterback's booting away. He does a good job with a nice high elbow on his throw hand. Eyes looking away. He doesn't stare down the running back on the toss. The other thing I wanted to point out, early on we did a chest pass. Okay, so from here, just turn, chest pass, the running back the ball. Now, what the pro of this is, look where he's catching it. Okay, he's completely outside of our tight end. Okay, so he is way outside the tackle box catching this, so all of his momentum's taking him out here. What we found, the bad part of this was, if we get any side of front side pressure, he's only catching it, you see here, at about, you know, two and a half, three yards of depth. Um, so we, we end up changing this to a, t- a reverse out pitch or a toss um and we'll show that later on but this gets him way out in front of the defense so if they're not um really setting this edge hard or flying up you've naturally got so much momentum and positioning that your your ability to get the edge is is usually pretty strong now this is um, what we call our base formation here. So this is double tight, double wing, fullback in the sniffer position, you know, tied up under the quarterback here. Okay. Again, you can see we got, you know, a lot of guys down here. Um, this team always did a really good job defending us, but you can see, you know, they've got five guys here, six overhang here, you know, playing with only two DBs. They really sold out to stop the run. And there was times where we gashed them, but they they did a pretty good job defending us. But again, you can see the flow on the front side and the way our tackle and our guard get around here. Now, 33 was exceptional. I mean, he's a big kid, as you can see here. He often sold out to get, you know, a kill shot on a on a smaller defender, which is, is great when it happens. Um, it's not by design. You know, we want him to reach this guy. And if, you know, if we get this reached and we get you know this reached now our tackle and our guard can all get around here leading this edge fullback blocks away um but slow motion here you see tight end is doing a good job trying to fight i wish he would have kept his feet going right here instead of working so much vertical but we've still got, you know, four or five guys. You know, we've got four guys here against three defenders right here. So this is still a good play for us right now. Coaching point, though, is get vertical here. If they're past you, you know, we need hats here. Now you're just in the way. But still a pretty good play overall, first down play. Now, now we're going full reach, so we're not doing boot to the backside. We're telling everybody we're reaching. We're reaching to the play. This is eight rocket, so it's going away from us here, obviously. Still in our base formation, double tight, double wing in the sniffer position. Okay, bunch of guys. Every defender is within, you know, five, six yards of the ball. We've been gashing these guys on power and wedge and inside fullback and inside wing back run game. So now... Try to get on the edge. One more time. Okay, I think our wingback could have done a little bit better job here. His course, which is a little awkward from his tilted position, but what his course needs to be is flat, and it's a race to the sideline. 
we should be selling out to get to the sideline as a wing back here, as a wing back blocker. Now, this guy's got his own rules as far as, you know, bounce, bang, and bend, and as far as how he's going to read the blocks. But this guy's got to sell out to get the edge. I think his course is too far upfield here. If he stays flat longer, I think our tight end does a great job. Both of our linemen do a good job. Wish we would have got that block right there, but he made the judgment call that he was not going to disrupt the play. It turns into a pretty good run here. This is a freshman running back, by the way, that ended up being a really good running back for us. Okay. Didn't love the effort backside on this play from our backside linemen, but they are getting cut. But to me, that's no excuse. Get up, get in 58, 49's way, somebody's way. Don't be watchers. You want to watch, get in the stands. Okay, now we're in an unbalanced formation, but same, all the same rules. Loaded up in the box, two guys playing really tight over the A-gaps, DBs playing all within 10 yards. Been pounding these guys between the tackles. They're loading it up. Everybody's selling out for that. So now we hit them outside. Good course by the tight end here, working to reach this guy. Keep working, keep fighting with that outside hand. Two for one right there. Now go be fast. Now, wing black, wing back, wing back block here. I thought was decent. Number twenty one here, pretty athletic kid. Not very big as you can see, kind of scrawny. Okay, but he sells out hard to try and get the edge. Corner doesn't give that to you. Okay, drive him out. Now he running back bends it in and runs for a touchdown. Now, this is why I put this one in to show you the bend back. Okay, so far we've had really clean edges, been able to get outside, no issues. Well, here, one, we're running it into the boundary, okay, which presents could present some problems, but the defense is balanced right now for the most part. They got one extra to defender to the field, and this kid was pretty good. Um, so we're running away from him. Now, these guys back here need to do a good job of getting up to the second level and then getting into the cutback lanes which we don't do a great job over here, but in theory, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, get it up. Now we see 70, 68 or 60 in our backside tight end, all right here looking to create this wall. If the defender or if the running back cuts back, which he does. Couple blocks, nice, easy touchdown run. Okay, so our next formational adjustment, or at least our first formational adjustment, I should say, is going flex, which is, you'll see here, we can shift to it or we can come out into it, but you know, we're pounding everything inside, pounding everything inside, um, and then we go flex. Now, flex, we use multiple ways. If we're running power, our rules are usually we're going to kick the first man outside of our tight end. So if they adjust way out here for our tight end, then power, the kick out on power gets really, really easy because look at all this space. But if we're going to run rocket out of it, which we're going to run rocket back this way here in a second, look at this defensive end. He does not adjust. There's this huge gap and a great angle here. If we crack or if we reach, now the wing back and the tight end just exchange duties. So wing back or tight end would get this guy. Wing back would get this bigger stand-up defender here but it always works out better when we can get a crack and then a wrap. Boom. Touchdown. Now, like I said, this guy, bigger guy, strong kid, loved um, throwing everything for the kill shot, which he does here. But focus more on this. You know, this wing back or this tight end here is maybe 150 pounds. Um, a really good kid this kid is 200 pounds and was one of their best players and you can see he completely stones him and we get the edge and even if this isn't a kill shot from our wing back it's still a really good play 
Seals him down inside. We got two guys up through. Okay, wingback's getting a kill shot here on the cornerback. Great job, you're a stud. But we got one offensive lineman. Our tackle's coming out here to try and get an angle on this safety. Our guard is up around. I in this backside pursuit, whether it's a linebacker, backside safety, whatever it is, to chase him down. Both get a hand on a man. Would have liked that to be a little bit better, but hey, touchdown's a touchdown. One more time, full speed. Good. Again, this is a team that I said gave us lots of fits in the run game, always played us really, really tough tackle to tackle. Okay. And you can see flex here. Now there's some confusion. This kid was an all state middle linebacker and he called all their defense. This kid was a all district, I think, defensive end, tight end for him. And you can see now they're, they're, they're spinning and what, what do we do? Okay, now they're playing slow. Number 15 here, this tight end, was a basketball kid. Um, you can see he ain't very big. Um, he was tall, was a good receiver for us in the, the play action game, but he was not a devastating blocker. Like I said, this kid was really good, big, strong kid. And you can see this kid's playing flat, trying to adjust late and is giving ground right away. Advantage us. Touchdown. No adjustment again. Now this, this is a really good team here that made it a couple rounds deep in the playoffs this year. Their answer was to load C and B gap and then have this linebacker that would stunt A based on a call or based on our formation, based on motion. And then they were just playing, don't get beat deep behind and play action. Now you can see how our tight end did it here. Because really, tight end, should his rules should take him to this guy. But he sees pursuit coming from this guy really, really hard, and he knows he's got somebody that can scrape off of his butt and be the next outside defender. So he reaches up. Tackle does a good job of getting in the way of that defensive lineman. This is a really good play for us here in a big game against a tough opponent. Uh, this was week one, too. So this was good play for us. You have about five minutes, coach. Okay. More of the cut back here. So we're going to flex. All the rules are still the same. You see our backside guys reaching up here. Let those backside defensive tackles and defensive ends go. If they catch this guy, I'm going to chew this guy out. That is not their responsibility. Their responsibility is the second and third level guys here. And you'll see sets the edge hard. Okay, got to get upfield. Now I've got a wave of red. If they were turned a little bit better, but still doing a good job here. Touchdown in a big game. Okay, let's get to some of the new stuff here. A couple of formation variants there that if you guys ever want to talk about, we can. Okay, so this is this past year. Okay, a couple of things that you see different right away from the alignment. We've backed our fullback up in our base. We still have an up call where we can move them up here if we want, but we've backed him up, and we're no longer foot-to-foot -foot splits. We've gone one-foot horizontal splits. Okay, one foot horizontal splits. And then here we go with Rocket. Now, if you look again at our backside here, these guys should be reaching up through working to the second level. These guys here are all reaching front side here. Um, again, the tight end can make a call with the tackle to block down, run around, and that's what we got there. Not the best job by our play side wing back but good enough to get us a score against uh, – uh, this is Upper Sandusky. They're three classifications higher than us size-wise. So, um, you know, good opponent, good job for us. Here it is from the end zone. Here, But you can see real clearly in this guard, he should be more on this course to get the linebacker where he's going to be. Um, but he still does a good job crossing his face here. Get up there, work a little bit harder, 
Now go find somebody downfield. Cut back. Outrun the defense. This is a really good example of our pin and pull. Look over here. Look this way. Our, both our tackle and our guard get around here and uh, do a good job reaching across their face, their opponent's face with their inside hand. Okay. So we tell our linemen, when you're reaching, you're taking your inside hand, which would be the left hand of these linemen, and you're reaching to their outside shoulder. So you're ripping across their chest, trying to get your hand, inside hand, to their outside shoulder. Really good job here by this uh, back or play side guard. And then you can see the tackle doing a really good job trying to eye flow coming inside from inside here. Settles down, gets a good shot on it. Good run here. Wish our wing back would have got a little bit better block there on the edge, but still a good play for us. Again, another good example of a down block. Now this time they actually have uh, the guard does the wrapping and the tackle and tight end go down. This was a game plan specific for this week um, based on the way they were lining up to us. Maybe. Fix your pad. All right. Put it on the work. We'll go on to the next one, see if it works. Huddle sideline was down this game, so we have an old film or an old camera filming it, but you can still see what's going on here. We're in flex. We, uh, Went to this um, out of the huddle, so we didn't adjust or shift to it. See that big gap there? They don't adjust. They don't line up to it. It gives us a natural pin. I would have liked this guy to stay to the outside. You watch our, our wing back here. He runs free all the way. I wish our wing back would have went to the pylon there, but still a good hard run. Get vertical. Get a touchdown. Hard to complain about that. Now, when I was talking earlier about the chest pass, the advantage of the chest pass is they're usually catching the ball, you know, over here. Even with the play side tight end, play side tackle. Well, when you do the reverse, there is a trade-off. Okay, you get more depth, um, which is, has been a positive thing for us. Um, and you might get a little bit better play action off of it, which has been our experience because you're, you know, as the quarterback turns his back to the defense, they lose the ball for a split second. Um, but what we gain or what we lose is where he catches the ball. Watch where he catches the ball here on this. Much more behind the, the guard, maybe over the tackle, but from here it looks like he's over the play side guard. So he's not catching it way out here in front like he was with the chest pass. So if you're going to decide one way or the other, that's the trade off. And you've got to be okay with one or the other. To us, this makes more sense to us because we have a lot of fullback run game or we've incorporated a lot of fullback run game off of our rocket toss that has been really, really beneficial to us as far as being balanced and defense is not keying on our run game or our wing back motion so much. If you want to key and sell out to stop rocket, fine. We're going to run rocket and we're going to come right back underneath of it with our fullback run game. Fuller, tight end, does a really good job here. Okay, gets great body position. If the guy wants to cut back underneath of you, it makes your block really, really easy. Guard does a really good job here, too, running around block defenders to try and get upfield. Wings got his eyes in the right spot. Hopefully, he can beat this man to his spot. And then the guard can even work around our wing and be a lead right up the sideline. Like our guard to go initiate contact a little bit more, not waste all that energy running down there. But still, good play. Coach, you might have a little extra time. Our next speaker is having severe connection issues because he's in the middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> okay. So take your time. Like, well, uh, I do have a quick question. Not and, I, and trying to get, trying sure. to fix this connection issue. I didn't know if I caught or not. What did you? Because uh, I had uh, coach ask, what do you gain from going from zero foot to full foot splits? Well, what we noticed was 
um, some of that congestion. When we run power out of that zero foot splits, we got very little run through, which is obviously great. That's what you want. You don't want any penetration. But we also lacked was a clear running lane for our running back. And when we had a big hammer like this guy here, when we had Dan, um, Mitten, <laughs> he would just pound it in there and run right into your lineman's backs. He didn't care. He would just smash it and try to get it three yards and be fine with that. But what happened when we started getting smaller running backs that weren't just, you know, uh, hammers like he was, they would get happy feet. They would lose all their forward momentum towards the line of scrimmage, and they would dance a little bit, and then they would either try to bust out or try to cut back to where you had no no offensive lineman help. Um, so what we got was by taking a one-yard split, it gave us a little bit more of our running lanes that were defined. Um, and if we want to, maybe I can show it on here with the end zone copy. So what we gain here, if we were foot to foot, now these guys, but if you had, you know, one defender here, one defender here, one defender here in each of your gaps, what we got was no horizontal stretch by alignment. So what we found was by going a one foot splits, we had still allowed for great, easy to maintain double teams. We didn't get much penetration to the play side when we we're running power or our base stuff or our G stuff or anything like that. But it allowed us to have cleaner windows for our running backs, and it actually made our pull stuff a little bit easier for our running a little bit horizontal easier for us in certain ways. Now, you lose some of that uh, if you're a big, uh, true double wing team that runs a lot of wedge, which we run a lot. You lose some of that natural form fitting on your wedge. You have to practice getting your helmet to your center's hip and, and actually creating that wedge a little bit more than what we did when we were you know, true double wing foot to foot splits back in the day. Okay. I was just curious. Like, why'd you get my, cause I, I, I know our next speaker's having some issues and I know we uh, deal with that issue, but um, yeah. like, I'm curious, like, why did you wait till after I left to add flex? Because that, and, and then second question is why did you have to show some of the Riverside film? Because it brings back bad memories. Um, I put the Riverside film in just for you. Uh -oh. like, honestly. Oh God! <laughs> no, um, so we went to flex partially with personnel. Um, we got in some, uh, you know, the year that you were there, the we had that really small tight end, and you know, we were just you know, we had twenty four kids or whatever it was that year, and we were just kind of limited with some of the people we had. I think, you know, Derek was calling most of the offense uh, the two years that we were together there, and then um, after that, we started doing a little bit more formational stuff to try and get. Um, you know, trying to make defenses think almost every week we had some new wrinkle of offensive formationing or, you know, something that we thought would give us an edge when we needed it, when we needed a big play or whatever. Okay. And if you want to, and then, still have time. and then I got a coach asking you, I mean, and I kind of probably know this answer as we're kind of wrapping up here for good coach Webster. Um, and what defense or te system techniques? I wouldn't say a defensive system gives it a problems. I said, I mean, you've probably kind of mentioned already, like when people just start cutting your line is kind of when you start getting into that I issue of technique. I would say, pro I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, those, those were usually, at least when I was there the two years, that was our biggest problem. Well, yeah. So obviously if you have teams that are really good at the cut, you're not just diving, you know, diving blindly. If there are actually some scheme and strategy on how they get into your lineman's legs, um, we teach uh, our linemen a technique that we call dumpstering um, when we get defenders that come at our legs. So we take time to practice that. But um, really the teams that, that I've had the most struggle with as being a head coach in the double wing is teams that play their base defense, like say a three, four or a four, three, but their linebackers fly like crazy. Um, we played Waynesfield Goshen this year. That's a three, four team. Now they, it looked like a five, two with two stand up defensive ends, but it was still their three, four structure. And they brought one safety down to maybe like six yards and their linebackers are playing at four, but they flew through any open windows that they had. And that really hurt our, um, cut back and, and some of those games where they played the alleys just as good as we did. So instead of popping in for eight to 12, we were taking three to four yard gains, if that makes sense. Um, 
Now, now what you're ignoring so, yeah. there, though, is is Waynesfield Goshen was ranked like second in the state at one point and yeah. was like legit like like 20 game regular season winning streak this year. Yeah. And counting. I mean, they went to know the last few years. Yeah. I mean, they were they were loaded up. I mean, obviously, if you've got dudes, it's hard to coach against dudes that are just better than your dudes. But um, wise, if they like like example here, this is about Gilead. They put, you know, seven or eight guys usually on the line of scrimmage or near the line of scrimmage. This if we get past this wave, you know, we make a three yard run. The chances are it's going to go to the house or be in the long run because we broke that long wave of defenders but if we have to go through two legitimate waves three legitimate waves of defenders three legitimate levels of defenders and just like anything you know you're going to limit your big play potential okay well well coaches um again um we'll put we'll tweet and put stuff out about the uh double wing clinic coaches hosting and hopefully or maybe it might end up on the channel we'll see it should but we'll not go i'm not going to say 100 percent sure it will but i mean schematically i think we're good unless there's some stuff that i don't know about that pops up uh coaches contact information is on the screen so don't hesitate to reach out to him um again coach is easy to get a hold of uh he does a good job about getting double wing stuff out there and kind of building oh building up there um otherwise i'm going to kind of um let coach go and then let coach webster get started a little early um unfortunately um as of right now coach barbie barbe is having some connection issues um because he's stuck in the middle of nowhere and working on that um but he's going probably he's hopefully going to try again about 7 10 if not uh we'll kind of adapt and adjust as we kind of go i mean this thing's always fluid um and life is always interesting so uh Coach Winslow, thank you, and I appreciate you coming on, my friend, and I'll talk soon. Sounds good, buddy. Thanks. If you guys need anything, holler at me. Will do. Thanks, Coach.